Welcome to the Pharmaceutical Technology Podcast, SED's Formulation Strategy. This podcast is brought to you by Abitech, a global leader in the development and manufacture of functional lipid excipients for pharmaceutical and nutraceutical markets. Abitech is dedicated to the advancement of essential bioavailability enhancement and formulation development technology. Abitech synthesizes and produces lipid-based excipients to enhance bioavailability of poorly water-soluble and poorly permeable molecules for the pharmaceutical and nutraceutical industries. For more information, please visit them on the web at www.abitechcorp.com. And now, here's your host for this podcast, multimedia producer for pharmaceutical technology, Ethan Castillo. Hello, everyone. This is Ethan Castillo, the Multimedia Producer for Pharmaceutical Technology, and I'm here with Dr. John Tillotson, the Pharmaceutical and Nutritional Technical Business Director of Americas at Abitech Corporation. Thank you for being here today, Dr. Tillotson. Oh, thanks for having me. Well, let's get started. What are some reasons to employ a SEDS formulation? Sure, absolutely. Um, I'll answer that. But before I begin, I'd like to just say what a SEDS formulation is. um, It stands for Self-Emulsifying Drug Delivery System. So this is a system of ingredients that contains an active ingredient, and when it comes into contact with water, it will automatically form an oil and water emulsion, which is thermodynamically stable, and it maintains the active ingredient in the oil phase. Um, The reason this is important is because in order for an active ingredient to be absorbed, it must be completely in the molecular state. So insoluble active ingredients, meaning they're not soluble in water, they will not become molecularized in the intestinal fluid. So by putting them into something they're soluble in, which is the SED system, they become totally and completely dissolved down to a molecular state for delivery um, and permeation across the GI tract. Uh, The reason you employ these, as you can imagine from my previous explanation, is that these are going to solubilize uh, BCS class 2 and class 4 APIs. Uh, the BCS is a bioclassification, biopharmaceutical classification system, and the, the two and four classes are insoluble in water. So the primary reason to employ a SED system is to dissolve actives that are insoluble in aqueous environments. Uh, the secondary reason to employ them is some of the ingredients used in SED formulations can actually increase permeation across the GI tract. What are the advantages a SEDS formulation can provide? Yeah, absolutely. This can be broken down into uh, three major advantages they can provide. The first one, is, as we previously discussed, is increasing the solubility of BCS class 2 and class 4 APIs, or active ingredients. The second, as we just touched on, is to increase the permeability of certain BCS class 3 and BCS class 4 active ingredients. The third reason is that the uh, SED system can protect an active ingredient on storage. It can be contained inside, for instance, if you were giving an injection um, or it was already emulsified, it could protect inside the oil globule, the oil phase, from oxidative and um, hydrolytic degradation. With regard to an actual oral dose, it can protect from enzymatic degradation of the API by protecting it once again inside the oil phase, which has an exterior typically of a surfactant phase that isn't broken down as readily by the enzymes. And so if you have an active ingredient that's subject to enzymatic degradation, it is potentially able to be protected during oral dosing by the SEDS formulation. A fourth and sort of a new uh, studies area for SEDS formulations, and these would be SEDS formulations that contain long chain lipids, uh, greater than uh, greater acid length than C than C10. These, due to the fact that they are metabolized and carried through the lymph, they can potentially be employed to target specific tissues in specific disease states. What are typical components of a SEDS formulation? Yes, uh, typical components. Uh, the SEDS formulation will always have a primary solubilizer, and this would be the ingredient, and it oftentimes is a medium chain triglyceride that the active is most soluble in. In certain cases with actives that have higher hydrophilic lipophilic balances or higher HLB numbers, 
you find that a mono and diglyceride is a better primary solubilizer. But this will be the ingredient that the active is most soluble in. Then there's typically a another emulsifier or a surfactant, which could potentially be a pegylated ester, and this will typically have a higher HLB value and be more water or more uh, hydrophilic. And it will sort of set up and thermodynamically stabilize the emulsion. And often cases, there's a co-surfactant. These are often polysorbates or polyethoxylated castor oils that are even more hydrophilic and set up inside the water. So this, these stages intercalate down to the actual primary solubilizer and keep this, the emulsion thermodynamically stable. And they also are responsible for creating the auto emulsification on contact with the aqueous environment. How are SEDS formulations classified? That is actually an excellent question, and it really doesn't have one answer. Uh, many different individuals classify them in different ways. I do like the definition of Professor uh, Colin Poutan, and he developed a classification system. And it's basically broken down into um, four classifications, type 1, type 2, type 3A, and type 3B. Type 1 would not be considered to be a said system. This would be a formulation where an active is incorporated in a neat oil, and the oil is digested by the body, and the body creates the emulsion. And these are typically more coarse emulsions. Type 2 incorporates a, an emulsifier, but typically the emulsifier is not greatly hydrophilic. And these will create an autoemulsifying system, but this system is subject to digestion by the body as its exterior substrate is still recognized as a substrate for the enzymes. A type 3A formulation is going to carry not only the secondary emulsifier, but a co-surfactant that is heavily hydrophilic, and this will create a relatively small emulsion, typically in the 250 nanometer um, range. And this is not going to be heavily digested as the external portion, the hydrophilic co-surfactant is not recognized as a substrate for lipases. And the type 3B is going to increase the amount of the hydrophilic surfactant found in the SEDS formulation. It will be less likely to be digested it's also much less thermodynamically stable. So the water can invade and micelles can form and reform and the API can come out at that phase, but typically it will already be in the molecular form. So it will probably remain soluble. And these, these particular emulsions are in the neighborhood of around a hundred nanometers. So they're very, they're, they're considered to be highly uh, micro emulsions. Where does SEDS formulation begin? Typically, it begins with your active. SEDS formulation always begins with the active. You have to know a few things about your active. Log P is a good thing to know. HLB is very important to know. And the reason the HLB is quite important to know is typically the way you select candidates for your SEDS preconcentrate, which the preconcentrate is the oil before it contacts the water. It's referred to as the preconcentrate. You select candidate components for this based on the HLB of your active matching the HLB of the components as closely as possible. Principally, the primary solubilizer should match very closely with the HLB of your active. Another important portion is the dosing of the active. If the active is extremely high dose, it may be diff more difficult to place it in a SEDS formulation. You'll have to make sure you have appropriate preconcentrate candidates that can dissolve that much active. Lower dose is less of a problem, as it's obviously easier to dissolve uh, less quantity in your uh, preconcentrate uh, vehicles. Another consideration is stability of your active inside each of your preconcentrate candidates. And you may not know this prior to formulating, but once you have your candidates, you'll want to be running in parallel stability studies in order to make sure that your active is in fact stable in all of the candidates you wish to consider. What optimization factors are important in SEDS formulation development? Well, the first, um, there's really three things that you're looking at that are major issues. Uh, maximum solubility in the proposed um, SEDS formulation components, emulsion characteristics that these components are gonna create, and also the dissolution 
that occurs with your active? What is the rate and extent of the overall dissolution of the active once it's incorporated in such formulation? For instance, you'll want to do maximum solubility studies in your primary solubilizer, your emulsifier, your surfactant, and your co-surfactant to understand where you have the greatest solubility of your active in each of these ingredients. Now, in competition with this is, how do these ingredients affect your emulsion? Typically, the goal is to obtain a microemulsion being less than one micron and preferentially having globule size of the emulsion less than 500 nanometers. So this is sort of the playoff. You may find that you have to give up some solubility aspects to gain the emulsion characteristics you need. The, the third thing is once you get those two pieces in order, you're going to want to look and see how is my dissolution. Is, am I getting the dissolution? Is this emulsion, this auto emulsifying system, creating emulsion fast enough for me once it contacts water? Am I getting a quick enough dissolution? Am I getting a complete dissolution? An important point to note is the globule size of your emulsion. You're going to want um, to make sure that if you're using a filter, which is typical in dissolution studies, you filter, filter the media before you um, read it either by HPLC or UV, you, you filter it. And if your globule size is larger than the filter you're using, you may remove your actual globules. So you have to take a look at that. And, and many times the filtration is 0.2 microns, which is only 200 nanometers. So you'll, you'll want to keep that in mind or you'll be losing active to the uh, filtration process. Are there any other advantages to employing said formulations? Absolutely. We, we touched on the other advantage I'd like to discuss just briefly with regards to permeation. Certain components of SEDS formulations, principally uh, components like MCTs and mono and diglycerides that are based on capric and caprylic acid or acid chain lengths of C8 and C10, these can actually modulate the opening of the tight junctions between enterocytes. And this offers a route to increase the absorption of polar compounds. And this seems a little bit, um, shall I say, these, these seem to be opposites in a sense, because typically said systems are used to dissolve uh, heavily hydrophobic uh, actives. But in the case of certain uh, hydrophilic actives, they, they won't absorb across the enterocyte. They will not absorb transcellular. But the SEDS components, by opening these tight junctions between the enterocytes, and it's a reversible opening, they can create aqueous channels for polar molecules to get through and increase their permeation. So that's one way that SEDS formulations can increase permeation. Another way is the, um, is the P-glycoprotein pump, which is a pump designed to remove toxins from our body. So for instance, the, the, your actual GI tract will recognize with this, this protein pump certain substances as toxins and throw them out. Unfortunately, certain active pharmaceutical ingredients are recognized as toxins. And glycerol monooleate and macrogol glycerides, which are pegylated esters and can be used as components of SEDS formulations, reversibly inhibit this pump and allow for greater permeation of actives affected by the, the P-glycoprotein pump. Well, thank you for that informative overview, Dr. Tillotson. We appreciate you being here today. This has been Ethan Castillo, the multimedia producer for Pharmaceutical Technology. Thanks to everyone for listening. You've been listening to the Pharmaceutical Technology Podcast, SEDS Formulation Strategy. This podcast was brought to you by Abitech, a global leader in the development and manufacture of functional lipid excipients for pharmaceutical and nutraceutical markets. Abitech is dedicated to the advancement of essential bioavailability enhancement and formulation development technology. Abitech synthesizes and produces lipid-based excipients to enhance bioavailability of poorly water-soluble and poorly permeable molecules for the pharmaceutical and nutraceutical industries. For more information, please visit them on the web at www.abitechcorp.com.